So like. Don't click yet. <laughs> oh no. Curtis Lab is a mainstay of chemical engineering biotechnology skill set room or lab. It will be a couple of words, but as Dr. Curtis always says, work hard, play harder. <laughs> um exciting and diverse. I feel like everywhere I turn there's a different project and it's like something completely new. Uh, pretty intense. Alive. Because what different about our lab and other chemical engineering lab is are is that we use a lot of living organisms uh, in our research like plants uh, we use bacteria lots of different bacteria some hairy roots just a lot of cool living organisms it's an experience although that's not one word uh, I think intense hectic intense experience because here I have been learning a lot of things I had never it's basically a word that says you get called out on your fun. Patience. I don't know. Um, I'm not a good researcher, I guess. But Bullshit. organization. I guess uh, I'm still learning, but yeah. Uh, for me, it was past experience in other labs, specifically molecular biology, that's allowed me to push a lot of projects forward. Dedication. You have to learn different things. Sometimes you have no idea about what's going on, but you have to research and look for it. From the experimental planning, the one of the very efficient experiment uh, research tool, because um, with that uh, you learn to anticipate uh, the good sides of your experiment or the down uh, pitfalls of your experiment, and uh, you start doing or uh, performing an experiment with uh, this kind of awareness uh, rather than being blocked about it. But yeah. don't let it be paralyzing. Enthusiasm. Okay. I think, yeah. Self-discipline. So a tool that's really helped me out with my lab work is this program called Snap Team, which is a software that I use a lot to uh, manipulate my plasmids and genes of interest on the computer and that helps me design primers, restriction, enzyme procedures that I want to use to do my cloning and without that computer software I wouldn't be able to do a lot of the work I do. In performing research the skill which I found most interesting and important is to mix the inserts and vectors in correct proportions otherwise you don't get what you need to and you will have to go through the process again and again it won't work. Make sure that you always keep track of what you're doing. Flexibility. Okay. Being able to put up with things that don't go the way you thought they were, and then you end up 13 hours later finishing what you started. All about skill, but I think um, just persistence was definitely necessary because, as most people know, in the labs after a while you fail many times, and so just not getting down on yourself, I suppose, uh, helped me just, you know, keep going and maintain the motivation to work hard and maintain that uh, level of enthusiasm, I suppose. Fear or failure? 
Uh, I think getting used to the type of the, the lab, the way it is run here, it's very uh, independent. There's a lot of people and a lot of different projects. So you kind of have to learn things you know, yourself and you can't really rely on learning from everyone else because everyone's project is so different that you really do have to kind of put in the time and effort to read and understand what you're doing in order to succeed. All the words and figuring out what everybody else is doing. Gotcha. But once you learn, it's really cool. Communicating, I guess, in research and uh, yeah, do I mean really uh, knowing what you're doing and then I mean uh, communicating your problems and uh, whatever you're troubleshooting uh, to the whole lab worker is not stuck or doing something that you don't you really don't have to or wasting your time or things like that. So, yeah. Trying to fully understand everything that Dr. Curtis says because he's a smart dude <laughs> and sometimes he says a lot of things that will go over your head and so I think you have to learn that it's okay not to understand everything but I guess try to go back and um, try to make sure that you got the gist at least and then try to ask him or others, the grad students typically, um, to clarify what he told and make sure you're going in the right direction. I think it would be uh, to to follow up Dr. Curtis' time. Be prepared, be ready, and uh, um, try to do some uh, prepared preparation on the time management. Definitely work on your own schedule, Curtis. Um, more hands off than I expected. And so you kind of have to make your own, you know, experimental plan. You have to kind of do everything on your own. Not everything on your own, but you're not going to get feedback unless you search for it. Well, I don't have an engineering background, and in Curtis Lab, we are using like many different techniques. So, it's engineering, uh, part of the uh, problems that we've been dealing has been uh, the most challenging parts for me. But uh, on top of that, uh, learning sterile techniques and working with um, working with substantially different uh, organisms uh, in the lab and uh, taking extra caution to keep everything sterile and happy uh, or again so-called happiness factor for uh, for different organisms. That's something um, that we figure out along the way and. It may be different for each organism. So. The steepest learning curve was when I joined the lab. Uh, no there way. was so much stuff going on, I, there were so many people. I have been trying to keep track of who is doing, like what the, are they doing. Four, and I have never had any idea like of what's the most interesting that is going on in the lab. Sorry. But as soon as I kept working for about a yeah. month, I did get acclimated and I started to learn who was doing what. In my case, I think it's chemistry because my major is not mainly related to it, so I have to study it before I do something. Really the key to doing well in this lab is you have to be very proactive of talking to him and you know he has he's so busy, there's so many projects and there's so many things going on in the lab that you really what helps the most is um, be prepared with an update or something about your research whenever you see him so that whenever there's a free moment you can just quickly update him. So in order to acclimate to uh, Chris Lab, you have to be really independent and just be willing to get done what is asked of you or what is even not asked of you a lot of times. And uh, that involves working a lot of hours, but even though you work a lot, it's a ton of fun.